respected citizens of the society, sisters and brothers. At the outset, uh, I should make myself clear that I am not comfortable to speak in an alien language to the people who are in my neighboring state. Unfortunately, we have been living in this country, I, as it has been told in my introduction, that I hail from Karnataka and my mother tongue is Kannada. On one side Tamil and on one side Malayalam speaking people are there, but we do not know to speak those languages, but we have picked up a language of the people who are 6,000 miles away and who ruled over us, making us slaves. This is the irony of the situation. We may be occupying the third place in the economy as the president of uh, the function has wished and also has assured only thing is what the income tax people will do, I don't know. And Malayalam and Manasalav Kachocha Sanchar but I am unable to express my thoughts. Hindi me bol sakta hu. Hindi me bol sakta hu. Iska arth aise nahi hai ki mai thoda thoda bol sakta hu. Hindi me achha hi bol sakta hu. Pure desh me mujhe pravas karna padta hai. Mai Hindi bolta hu. Lekin Kesari Malayalam Weekly ke sampadak Mahoday ne mujhe kaha aap English me bolo. Okay. And the president of the function has raised certain issues and he expected that I should speak on some of those things, but uh, I am bound by the organizers of this program that uh, they have given me a topic and just know the friend here on the dais who has been uh, announcing the programs has also announced the topic as the historical plane upon which the Sangh was instituted or the historical background of the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh. The founding of the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh. And when I see among the audience here, there is Gopal Malarji, Gangadhar Etanji and Murliji and uh, Venuji and Sendilji and many more among the audience who have been Swayam Sevaks for decades. And once again I have to speak the things which they all know, and many things uh, which I may not speak, but they know. So this is a very typical situation. But however, I think, I hope that there may be many new people among the audience. As you all know well, the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak was, Sangh was founded in Nagpur on 27th September 1925, which was the Vijayadashmi Day by revered Dr. Keshara Hedgevar. Today the Sangh is well-known Hindu nationalist movement all over Bharat and elsewhere in the world. This organization launched during the heydays of a freedom struggle has evolved into a mighty nationalist movement in the post-independence Bharat, reaching almost 
every corner of this vast country and encompassing almost every segment of our ancient and diverse society. Many political analysts, prominent thinkers and writers have opined that the Sangh is the most influential movement in independent Bharat that has reached the center stage of our national life today. The RSS, which is known as Sangh, popularly, will, will be completing its uh, 100 years of national service in 2025. Against this significant occasion of centenary, the well-known Malayalam Weekly Kesari and the Hindustan Prakashan Trust have thought of a very timely event of organizing lecture series on topics related to Sangha. I heartily congratulate the Hindustan Prakashan Trust and Team Kesari for this commendable endeavor. I hope the Amruta Shatam Prabhashana Parampara will eminently achieve the purpose with which it has been launched today. I am happy to be associated with the inaugural function of this very significant event. I consider it as my honor to be in the midst of you on the first day of this lecture series. I thank the organizers for inviting me to share my thoughts on the basis of my study and association as an ordinary Swayam Shivak in this great nationalist movement. Friends, if one wants to properly evaluate the journey and influence of an organization, it is imperative to understand the historic background of the establishment of that organization. If you want to know the background of Ramakrishna Mission or Ramakrishna Math, you will have to study Swami Vivekananda's life. Unless and until you are well versed with Vivekananda's life, you will not be understanding why the Ramakrishna mission was founded at all. If you want to know why Vijayanagar Empire was founded, then it demands from us that we should try to know, study the life of Swami Vidyaranya. Because this is important how Vidyaranya had this experience and why he picked up her and Bukharaya to establish Vijayanagar Empire. Likewise, if a person wants to know the historic background of the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, one should know the life of its founder, Dr. Hedgevap. Unless and until we know and appreciate the life of uh, Dr. Edgar right from his birth, we will not be comprehending the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh in its totality. Dr. Edgar was a born patriot. And 
he was not ready to be called a patriot. If somebody introduced him, many a time it happened, he was introduced by people that he is a great patriot. He said it is demeaning to be introduced as a patriot. A person born in this country has to be patriot. If you say that uh, he is a patriot, you mean that others are not patriots? Then I am in the midst of non-patriots. He went one step further. Dr. Edgevar said, that it is uh, introducing a person as a patriot of the country he is like introducing him that he is a human being. A person is standing before me that he is a human being. There is no need to introduce him as a human being. This was the thought current of Dr. Edgevar. So he was a born patriot, an awakened activist, a keen student of social history of our country, a master of human psychology, an ace organizer, a deeply committed nationalist who sacrificed everything at the altar of motherland. did everything for the cause of nation. He studied not for his career. He studied medicine and became a doctor. There were umpteen chances and jobs were offered to him. In those days, Burma, that is today's Myanmar, and in Nagpur itself, around Nagpur, in those days, hardly there were 75 medical practitioners in the modern medicine. So Dr. Edgar had a golden opportunity to become a well-established physician and earn enough money, but he didn't do it even for a day. Whatever he did in his life, that was for the glory of the nation. To pay back the debt for having been born in this great land. Rashtra run chukane ke liye, is bhoomi ke run chukane ke liye, Dr. Hedgevar Dine, अपने जीवन के एक एक क्षण को अपने रक्त के एक एक कण को उन्होंने इसके लिए ही व्यय किया सो दैट इज वाई ही वॉज ए बॉर्न पेट्रियट वेन आई से और वेन मेनी हु हैव स्टडीड हु हैव नोन हु हैव सीन डॉक्टर एड के बाद दे से दैट इट मीन्स द एवरी सिलेबल ऑफ द वर्ल्ड is very much apt to his personality. Dr. Edgar's patriotic acts during his school days as a boy have been highly inspiring and instructive apart from being the early indicators of his future life. Dr. G was born in 1889 on the first day of April, which was the Chaitra Shukla first Devarsha Pratipada day. The new year for most parts of our country. And this morning I have been told that today is the Sihan day and uh, Malayali is observed today as the new year day. So, happy Best wishes to all of you and your family members on this occasion. 
Dr. Ji had his schooling in Nagpur, later on in Pune and Yavatmal. He did not choose to go out of Nagpur for studying in the schools, but he was sent, he, he was forced to go because he was expelled from the school because of his patriotic acts. He organized one day matra meditation in the school. And I do not want to go into the detail of this uh, story, this incident of doctor's life, because uh, many of us may be remembering those things, and I request those of you who do not know about it, kindly go through the biography of Dr. Hedgevar. He did not want to eat the sweet that was given to him on the occasion of the Diamond Jubilee of uh, Queen Victoria's coronation. So these were the patriotic acts, the patriotic deeds that young Kesho demonstrated in his early days. And as a result of his Vande Matra Majjhi, he led the agitation, he planned it, he executed it with his friends. And uh, he had to go out of the school because he was expelled, because he did not, he wasn't ready to tender an oral apology which was demanded by the school management. Not even any written undertaking, just an oral apology. Dr. Hedgever was not ready, friends, he was expelled, no remorse. He said, it is an opportunity for me to go to some other place and do the work there. And the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sang people belong to this category. I can only laugh at the people when they say that Bala Sahib, they were a standard apology during emergency. He came, he went to write an undertaking. Dr. Edigavar was not ready even to give an oral apology and we belong to this legacy. He pursued his uh, school education and later on he went to Kolkata to have his uh, medical education. Dr. Edgevar was, al was already active in Nagpur in public life. Whatever he could do at that school age he was already involved in those works, either as an associate or as himself as a planner or as himself as a person who led the activities in socio-political sphere for the attainment of freedom and to organize society. His important uh, reason was to go to Kolkata was to associate with the revolutionaries. Here I should mention one very particular uh, incident or particular information. That young Keshav even before going to Kolkata had already had his connection with the revolutionaries. The Famous Alipur bomb case was there, where Aurobindo was involved and he was, he, he was involved in the case and there were uh, charges against him in the cons ba 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 Alipur bomb conspiracy. And many people were arrested by the British and she Aurobindo was also in jail. 
and there were some people who wanted to raise some funds in order to put up the legal defense in support of the revolutionaries and one madhava das sanyasi he came from bengal to nagpur and he stayed for some, some weeks four five weeks nagpur and surrounding areas we may remember that there was a days of british and these people were associated with revolutionary activities that is why the underground living was a rule madhav sanyasi cannot go freely around nagpur town his whereabouts should not be known that was a hideout sort plant and during this entire period keshav hedigewar was with him in order to protect him from the police and also to help the raise funds for the legal defense of the alipur bomb conspiracy people who were charged against revolutionaries this is how he was already having some connection or he was picked up for such activities by the leaders because he showed his capacity his metal to actively participate in such activity in such uh, moments keshav hedigewar had great respect for lokmanya tilak lokmanya tilak's persona and personality were highly inspiring for the young people of those days and a man with great intellectual power highly dedicated person commanding respect in public life made exemplary sacrifice when lokmanya tilak's wife died many people in pune were not ready to come and give their shoulders to pick up the body of lokmanya tilak's wife because of fear of the british police and for bal gangadhar tilak he had to keep the body of his wife on a cart and pulled himself to the cremation ground here is a man who could have been wrangler in the field of mathematics a great lawyer who authored gita rahasya a commentary on the bhagavad gita who almost started the sudeshya movement in our country and lokmanya tilak inspired the younger generation in those days and dr kesh vedge was one of them nagpur in those days was a center of many socio political activities many of us may be knowing that boslas were ruling the nagpur region and the many riyasats boslas were also there who were descendants of the maratha rule of shivaji and others and in the battle of sitabaldi in 1817 november boslas were totally defeated and almost decimated by the british army thereafter appa saheb bosle who was at that time the chief of bosla kingdom was arrested in 1818 he was being taken to prayag first well allahabad on the way appa saheb escaped from the police and he came back to vidarbha and he went to rajasthan he went to jodhpur he wanted to organize people against the british 
and such an inspiring uh, thing happened and british were searching for him naturally and the pasa bosley was not nabbed by the british police but unfortunately by the jodhpur king jodhpur king arrested him why i am saying this this is how our people were here is a person who is fighting against the british who has given exemplary rule administration in the nagpur region who escapes from the british police and here is another hindu king in jodhpur who arrests him but one good thing that uh, jodhpur king did was that he didn't hand over him to the british he said no i will not give him he was treated well as per the respect and honor of appa saheb bosle but he was kept in a under with, behind bars he was given some respect and honor but ultimately appa saheb died in jodhpur all these things were sto- told as stories through folk songs in harikatha like things in nagpur and around nagpur areas in the childhood of dr kesu hidgewar gonds were the tribal people have been there that is why the nagpur region is called gondwan and the divide and rule policy of the british on one side they instigated the gonds against the rest of the society and on the other side they said that those class uh, lost their kingdom because of the brahmins of the region so that is why the society was in perpetual conflict on one side the tribal people gonds and on the other side the brahmins and the non brahmins of the nagpur region and when the british took over the textile and the weaving professions in the nagpur and vidarbha region were totally destroyed and we all know during the british rule how our cottage industries rural industries or indigenous trade and commerce were totally destroyed please read what will durant has written the case in india please read the book roots of under development by kusumlata kedia also you can read shashi tarur's book about the area of the darkness so the british were playing their tricks their games and the western education they thought would make people the english education would make people totally mentally slaves which mccall had dreamt of and to a certain extent it happened also in bengal and other parts of the country maybe in bombay province in madras province uh, madras this presidency and bombay presidency etc but also we should remember that many people who received such a english education they did not become slaves to british they had the new awakening and awareness about the happenings across the world lokomanya tilak studied english gopal krishna gokhale studied english the western education is there that pranjape or narendra nath that who became swami vivekananda or the maharshi arobindo who studied in england and europe so it is not that the people who stay all of them who were the students of the western education became mentally slaves 
because their cultural roots and heritage is strong enough to resist the onslaughts of the English education. Nagpur had many things in those days. Geographically, it is well situated in such a strategic place. The Nagpur people always appreciated heroic spirit. I can give one uh, wonderful example. Anna Sahib Patwardhan, he approached Salar Jang of Hyderabad. Salar Jang had lost his region and the British were there and he said that you can buy back uh, the Vidarbha region by paying some money to the British. But Salar Jang said, I have taken loan and I am short of funds. And Anna Sahib Patavardhan from Nagpur, he said, I am ready to give you some money. You can deposit in the bank and negotiate with the British, take the Vidarbha region back and give it to me. And this wonderful idea, Salarajan was uh, highly surprised how this man can give so much. And in those days, just Salarajan asked his secretary to approach Anna Sahib whether he can really give the money. And Anna Sahib arranged 2 crore rupees. Those days, 200 years back. And those 2 crore rupees were taken and Anna Sahib then went to Madras and from there to he was to, after paying the one, he was to take the Salar Jang to uh, make him to negotiate with the British but unfortunately Salar Jang passed away. He died. Money is gone. Anna Sahib Patavardhan's entire life had to be spent in repaying the interest of the loan that he has taken. But he didn't lose his spirit. He did it. Such patriots have been there. Is it not necessary to remember those people in the Amruta Varsha and Amruta Kala of independent Bharat? He had to pay the interest for the debt, the loan. Are we ready to pay the debt that these people, the debt of the sacrifice of such people? This is what we have to teach to our new generation. So coming back to Nagpur situation, Nagpur people were uh, they had kept interest in many pursuits, wrestling, sword play, malcolm, gymnastics, physical adventures, spear throwing, and also Nagpur people were uh, getting the information about various ideologies and thought currents that were going on one side on Mumbai and on the other side Kolkata and in the north in Delhi. So Nagpur being the centre, people were crossing and passing through the city and because of that many people who were educated class of Nagpur were well informed about these things. So they knew about the Indian National Congress was established. Sarajanik Sabha was started in Pune and on the same line, similar lines, Nagpur people started Loka Sabha, people's Theosophical Society was started in 1889, the same year of uh, Dr. G's birth year. Brahmo Samaj was started, people knew about Raja Ram Mohan Rai, Devindranath Tagore, Keshav Chandra Sen, Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar of Bengal. Vidarbha and Nagpur people were knowing about Ramakrishna Paramahansa and Swami Vivekananda's work. In 1875, Maharshi Dayananda Saraswati founded Arya Samaj. In 1882, he came to Nagpur to start the branches of Arya Samaj in Nagpur. And he stayed for several weeks there. Social reform works were going on in, uh, like in Bengal. 
in many parts of Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. Jyoti Bafule, Gopal Haridas Deshmukh, and many such people. Agarkar, who was a close friend of Lokmane Tilak, they were also active in social reform activities. Satya Shodak Mandal of Jyoti Bafule was founded by him to give education to women and also to establish social justice in the society. So many such things were happening in those days. Tilak's era started, Lokomane Tilak's era started in 1899. And almost for 20 years, his public life was there. A revolutionary organization. About his revolutionary activities, Trilokera Chakravarti, who was his associate, his colleague in the revolutionary movement, wanted to say certain things to the public in the centenary year of Dr. G. Unfortunately, Trilok Chakravarti, he assured, he promised to Sangha Karyakartas of Nagpur in 1989 to Mani Dattopan Thengdiji and others that uh, he will meet them next day in Nagpur and he will explain what Dr. Hedigevar had contributed and how he participated in the revolutionary activities when he was in Bengal and later on till his death. Trela Hakkira Chakravarti unfortunately died the same night. And whatever could have been told by Trelokina Chakravarti, who was a fast friend and a colleague of Dr. Edgevar, he missed it forever. Dr. Edgevar did not want publicity. He was against fame and propaganda. He did not want it. And destiny also played the same thing. But however, many people who knew him during those days have recorded what he has done in that very trying and significant period of our national life. Advent of Tilak era in the 89 had two things. One, terrible famine in the Bombay presidency area. The Nagpur also, to a certain extent, a victim of this uh, famine. The Bengal famine was created by the British. It was an artificial famine. Whether Bombay presidency famine was such or not, till now, nobody has written. The second thing was epidemic plague. Those of us who know the early life of Dr. Hedigavar in Nagpur, he were, and his brothers were very much involved in providing succor to the patients of the plague. The epidemic was such that every day hundreds of people were dying. And Dr. Hedigavar was active in reaching out to people to help them, to save them, or to cremate the bodies. And as I already said, the assassination of uh, Rand by the Chapekar brothers had taken place in Pune. 1857 wars, uh, the post-1857 the struggle for freedom, which failed, unfortunately, because of certain misplanning and mishandling and lack of communication at proper time at proper level. The aftermath of 1857 defeat or debacle had its own effect on the people, those who were fighting for freedom. 
पॉजिटिव बलवंत फड़के हैड राइज विज वॉइस बाबा साहेब नरगुंदकर द ट्राइबल पीपल द वनवासी एंड द किसान एजिटेशन आर गोइंग ऑन इन डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री अगेंस्ट द ब्रिटिश एंड देयर ट्रिक्स एंड प्लेज अगेंस्ट द टैंक्स अबाउट मेनी अदर थिंग्स नाउ सी द लिस्ट ऑफ द पीपल हु आर इन डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री हाउ दे वर एक्टिव either in organizing and awakening the society or to raise the voice against the british ram singh kuka andolan in 1885 kudiram bose the revolution of bengal hanged in 1908 madanlal dingra for the disciple of savarkar who was hanged in 1909 Anant Kanari, another revolutionary in Pune, arrested and hanged in 1910. Once a year, Vivya Sayer, whose activities are well known. 1911, Avad Bihari, Govinda, Amir Chand, Hukum Chand, Vishnu Ganesh, Pingre, Sara Bai, Bagi, Kartar Singh, all in 1919. So, 1899 to 1919, these were the people who tried to organize armed struggle against the British, who tried to awaken the people in their own spheres. Kesari, Kal, Bhala, Deshava, Kanta, many such journals in Marathi, in Hindi, in Bangla. they were being published in those days and people were reading the revolutionary books physical activities like body building kushti gymnasium competition during the festivals about these things so that uh, we have to fight against a mighty empire that the social reform is required physical fitness is required For the arms, struggle, weapons, and ammunition, sir, to be provided in large number, in large quantity. Speeches of great patriots like Brahma Nitya, like Bapu Jani, Tapasvi Achyut Kunarka, Tapasvi Paranjpe. These are going on. And Dr. Balakrishna Munje, who was in a way mentor. Dr. Hedge Avar, for certain period, he came to Nagpur after his participation in the Boer War. He had the exposure to the Western world, and in such a situation, Keshe Hedge Avar was a young man who was active, who was thinking. of his the goal and objective of his life to make this country free and society to be organized bengal's partition had taken place in september 1905 the swadeshi movement had started vanga vanga the partition of against the partition of bengal and nagpur youth supported lokmanya tilak in surat session of the congress in 1907 the cultural component of this country was also emphasized during all these people i do not want to go into the details of quotations by various writers who have written who have authored wonderful books about the indian national movement revolutionaries others garamdal naramdal every everything from 1857 to 1947 for 90 years the great and inspiring history of the armed struggle the revolutionary movement of this country will stand as a source of inspiration for all time to come anywhere in the world 
the revolutionaries of this country had the highest moral component in their activities. Unquestionable morality. The revolutionaries of this country had the great spiritual basis for their work. That is why one author has written that these people were uh, having arm in one, the pistol in one hand and the Bhagavad Gita in the other. When they went to the gallows, there was not even a single grain of remorse on their faces. They were smiling as if they are meeting their mother. They said that we believe in rebirth. We will take birth and birth and birth again and again and again in this holy land. And serve the humanity. This was the spiritual and cultural foundations that these young revolutionaries had in their personality. This was there. But unfortunately, the society was not united. The activities were sporadic. People were even then considering the other person on the basis of caste and community. So that was the period when Brahma Bandhavas Brahma Samaj, Prarthana Samaj, Ari Samaj, many of these organizations uh, took birth. Swami Shraddhananda of the Ari Samaj has written a book, Why Hindus Should Be Organized. Hindu Sangatan Kyo. The book is a small book published in 1924 November. RSS was founded in 1925. And Swami Sraddha in his introduction to the book says, and in one or two chapters also he explains, there have been efforts in Punjab, for example, Hindu Sabha has been started and later on Hindu Mahasabha. The thing is they picked up some leaders from 25 places in the country, ask them to assemble somewhere near Delhi. And out of 25, 19 came, the meet, committee was started, formulated, and the next session was to be organized somewhere in Meerut or some Haridwar. Organizers were three people who convened the conference. Six people attended, and out of these three, two did not come. Who were the conveners? This is the way Hindu organization was taking place. This is what Swami Sraddhananda Ji has written in his book. Great intentions were there, wonderful dreams were there, but what about the act? Among the revolutionaries, There are some people who are black sheep. Either they supported the British or they were planted by the British. They lost way. Chandrasekhar Azhar is sitting in Alfred Park the information was given to the police by Mirbhadri Tiwari. These were the chinks in our armor. So, such was the situation. And I do not want to get into the details of uh, revolutionary acts of uh, Dr. Ji. Jogesh Chandra Chatterjee, who 
has written a book in search of freedom has mentioned uh, about dr edgewar during his stay in kolkata which lasted 5 years dr edgewar emerged as a highly popular figure among the nationalist leaders and revolutionaries in bengal edgewar also functioned as a link between the revolutionaries of bengal and central provinces a large quantity of pistols and other small arms was dispatched from bengal to the central provinces of which nagpur is the headquarter whenever edgewar used to visit nagpur he used to carry arms from bengal to during the holidays when he was studying medi- me- medical education be- medicine in uh, national medical college he used to visit nagpur on trip for months or five months he used to carry arms and distribute it so there were uh, many such uh, things that were going on and hgmr was uh, listed in book 1914 political criminals of india january 1914 only those individuals are included in this list by the criminal intelligence office of the government of india during those days the british involved in revolutionary organizations and activities and who knew how to make bombs and other explosives this book booklet is known as book 1914 among police and intelligence from the central provinces dr hedigewar's name was included this is for those people who sometimes say that the rss and the founder of rss were not involved in freedom struggle people write about it so we need not want to have their certificate but the fact is this now after the 1857 war the country war of independence as i said there is a situation people that uh, what is going to happen now there were four streams who wanted to pick up struggle against the british the one stream said uh, okay we have failed for once but we should try again we shall regroup we shall train our people have better communication and the armed struggle should continue the revolutionaries was the baron padke to subhash chandra bose hindustan republican army chandra shekhar azad bhagat singh naujawan sabha many many the second stream a people th- thought that uh, we should uh, make people politically aware this political awareness is lacking in our country in our society hence to create political awareness in the people big agitation was launched throughout the country and congress became a people's movement not just passing resolutions and requesting the british queen to grant us some freedom some liberty but it became a people's movement so that had its own impact on the freedom struggle the third stream was emphasizing on the social reformation see we are having so much of selfishness we are divided among our society as caste community etc so that's why this uh, differences and diversities uh, have created lot of uh, mistrust and uh, disunity among the countrymen so that's why we have to patch up all these things and have a strong society and that's a social reform is required women emancipation illiteracy should be removed all these things and there was one fourth step which was emphasizing on the cultural nationalism of this country from the vivekananda and this master namakshit parvansa 
Maharshi Dayananda Saraswati and many such people. So all these four streams had their own importance. They have definitely carved the niches in the history of India. <laughs> and they are all to be remembered forever by the people of this country for their great contributions during those trying periods of our nation's history. But one single way is not going to provide succor and answer to all the problems and questions of our country. Dr. Hedgevar, he participated in the Congress movement. He became, he was made Joint Secretary of the Vidarbha region of the Indian National Congress. Before that, uh, he was the Joint Convener of the Voluntary Corps, Swayam Sevak Dal, to organize the conferences of the Congress in 1920 when I Nagpur Congress session was held. Dr. Paranjape was the convener of the Swayam Sevak Dal, volunteers to organize the conference. And with him, Dr. Hedgevar was there with Dr. Paranjape as the joint convener. So he saw many leaders from very close quarters. He was an exemplary organizer, as I have already told. So that's why the Nagpur session, as per the organization part, was there. It was very good. And in that conference of the Congress, as the members of the Swayam Shavak Dal and also the reception committee, Dr. Hedigevar proposed two resolutions for discussion and adoption in the session. One was to declare total independence and work for that. And the other was to liberate all the countries from the clutches of the capitalist European forces. But these resolutions were not accepted by the committee and hence there was no question of discussion and passing the resolution. But these uh, resolutions themselves show what Dr. Keshav Hedgevar was uh, thinking of. In 1920, he was 31 years of age. He had returned five years before that from Kolkata as a certified doctor. He had participated in various activities all apart from revolutionary activities and many social activities. He was a part and parcel of uh, many local organizations, Bandhav Samaj, <coughs> there was a Bharat Sevak Parishad, Hindu Yuva Parishad, Many of the socially active and social reform activities, he was participating in them also. He was running a newspaper called Swatantriya. He was a Swadeshi Pracharak for the Swadeshi movement. And one Rashtriya Science of Mandal was established and he was working for that also. So Dr. Hedgevar had uh, his uh, experience in the field as an organizer. In 1920, 20, 1921, because of one of his speeches, he was arrested by the police and the charges were framed that uh, sedition charges were there against him. Already he had one such thing in his younger age in 1908 in Rampayali in Chhattisgarh. 
where uh, he had made a public speech as a young boy, but uh, he was re released. But here, he was produced before the court. And in those days, the people who go to, who were arrested by the police, they should not put up de defense. They should not raise a, their voice against the government. They should accept the punishment that is given by the court and accept to go to the jail. So going to jail is the great patriotic activity. Dr. Hedgev was not of this idea and thought. He said, okay, let us go to jail if necessary. If necessary, let us even die. But living for the country is important. Working for the country outside the jail is also more important. That's why I will uh, put up my defense. And Dr. Edgar put up his defense. And in the first question he said, what is the authority that you as a judge is here to deliver justice to us? Under what rule the British are, under what rule of the whole world, the British are running their empire in this country? What is the logic? In my country, I speak something, but you, who represent a government which is an alien government, you are trying me here and you are going to pass the judgment to punish me. You have no loca standing. This was the way of Dr. Hedgeber's defense in the court of law. And after hearing his argument, the judge said, your defense is more seditious than your original speech. So he was sent to jail. And in 1921, August, he was sent to jail and for in July 1922, he was released for nearly 11, one year, 11 months or a little more. And on 19th August 1921, Gandhiji was arrested. All this was a non-cooperation movement or civil disobedience movement was going on. And this non-cooperation movement was withdrawn by, the, by Mahatma Gandhiji after the Chauri Chaura incident. And he was sent to jail for six years, Mahatma Gandhiji. And after nearly a year, 11 months or a little more, when Dr. Edgevar came out, he was uh, given a rousing reception by the people and a big meeting was arranged in the, one of the important uh, Maidan's grounds of the Nagpur city. That was fine. But after that, uh, what Dr. Hedigabar felt was, the society is almost dead. The struggle had become too cold. No activities under Indian National Congress were going on. Mopla riots had taken place in Kerala. Thousands have been killed. Muslim riots and Muslims against Hindus that was going on. Gandhiji had asked to come out of the schools and courts and government offices, but now schools were running normally. People were going to courts and kacheris. Offices were being held. The national schools were started against the British or the government schools. And these national schools were deserted. People had shunned them. And in such a situation, the Dr. Hedgevar felt, what's happening to society? It had a very deep impact on the minds of Dr. Hedgevar because of this numbness and cavity due to helplessness of the people. 
on one side muslims were emboldened because the british had played their role the, their game of divide and rule very well so muslim community was feeling that british are closer to them and the muslim league had already been active and people had serious doubts about gandhi ji's uh, efforts of uh, getting freedom within a year he had promised so people had their own uh, doubts about this uh, method and government's uh, repressive coercive deceptive activities were on high and in such a situation dr hedge were thought what is the way out after he when he, before going that uh, he, they were studying the freedom movement of different countries one such was a uh, ireland where imandi weller and his uh, sin fein movement they thought of running parallel or alternative government as part of war of independence such a thing can be taken up in our country also this was the thought of dr edgar and others during those days but they could not convince gandhi ji or the congress leaders in this so that was the situation dr ji was sure and in in in, in this year uh, 1914 to 1918 as we all know the first world war had taken place and when the war was going on the first world war the british were enlisting the young cadets for the armies from the from our country and there was a competition among the nationalist leaders of bharat including nagpur maharashtra delhi and many places to get in to the british army in big number so that uh, the british had promised that after the war we will give you independence so that's a strengthen the british army so this was the idea but dr hedge was said don't believe these british we can get into army only to learn how to handle the arms and weapons to know the intelligence things of inside but helping the british in the war believing that they are going to give us freedom after the war is next to impossible he didn't believe and he was thinking what he said in within another 20 to 30 years there will be another war by the europeans this one world war has taken place he told this to a few friends what is the basis for its prediction and assessment the friends have written we don't know whether it was his vision out of self introspection or due to a deep study of the germans and other europeans he was keen of taking the advantage of the the situation at that time to attain freedom when the enemy is weak hit him so we should have a strong organized society within 20 years again there will be such a situation by then we should have an organized society to gird up its loins and take up the struggle to the its uh, ultimate level hindu society without hating any other society or community but only on the basis of its own capabilities and sacrifice should attain freedom of the country these are the words of dr edgar as recorded by 
his closest friend appaji joshi and for this we should make society strong and capable he shared this idea with his friends during 1922 23 and 24 14 brainstorming sessions took place in nagpur wardha and uh, other places like akola and other places appaji joshi has recorded this in these 14 meetings some of them were attended by appaji joshi also dr hedge ever was explaining how our society is disunited thousands of years of history of our land it is not for the first time that the british have played such a role we have been fighting and fighting it is because of the certain uh, very important reasons of the downfall of our nation we are not been able to establish a united one nation on the strong basis of our culture and civilization and heritage without practicing any discrimination on any basis unless and until we do that we will not make this country a glorious and happy and a prosperous country today or tomorrow the british will have to leave this country they will have to say goodbye to this country they cannot rule us forever the society will rise the situation will change the geopolitical scenario will change the british will have to fight another war and they cannot continue on forever and forever and for that the freedom struggle should be strengthened and we should do that but after british leave this country what is going to happen many agitation in the parts are there today we do it we see no results but let us not lose heart let us have confidence in this ancient society he contemplated on the entire history of thousands of years of bharat there is no organization that binds the entire country today without any barrier any fissiferous tendency no strong and powerful sense of nationalism utkat rashtra bhakti ke abhav mein देश के लोग कुछ समय के लिए उत्साहित होकर सक्रिय हो सकते हैं किसी नेता को देखकर किसी कार्यक्रम से भाग लेने के लिए परंतु एक सस्टेन्ड नेशनलिस्ट स्पिरिट थ्रू आउट लाइफ इन एवरी एक्टिविटीज ऑफ वंस लाइफ अनलेस एंड अंटिल दैट इज इनकल्केटेड इन एवरी ह्यूमन बीइंग इन दिस कंट्री even when we attain the freedom we will not be able to retain it forever even if we retain it we will not make the country prosperous <coughs> this country is a hindus this land is the motherland of the hindus they have evolved a culture this culture has made this a nation this nation has developed a civilization this civilization has made contributions to the world and that world is considered to be one family by the hindus so we start from the nation but we entire embrace the whole humanity that is the basic philosophy of hindus the hindustan does not live for itself as marshu arabindo said india will rise it will not rise she won't rise for herself she won't rise to trample others under the feet she won't rise to make other slaves india will rise india will rise as a lighthouse to give guidance to show the path for the entire humanity and if that has to be done 
this society has to be organized. Hindustanis of Hindus, patriotic and nationalist feelings and acts have to be every day natural phenomenon of a country, of a nation. Culture is the basis of us. Seva and Tyaga, as Vivekananda said, the service and renunciation, these will have to be the bedrock of a society which wants to achieve great things. For that, this Hindu nationalist feeling will have to be imbibed into every human being of this country. And for that, who will do that job? He had told once to Trelokanath Chakravarti that somebody has to do this. But I think if nobody is there, then I will have to take up this as my life mission. This is what Trelokanath Chakravarti has recorded. And Dr. Kesho Valram had given up. With this background of his study of thousands of years of history of this nation, his first-hand experience in public activity, his total involvement in the freedom struggle, his wide contact of people from different walks of life, his deep contemplation, his understanding of the basis of spirituality and the cultural heritage of this nation, his love, his sensitivity for everything that is of this nation, and his vision for the future, he founded the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh on the auspicious day of Vijay Dasmi in 1925. This is the historic background of the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh. The rest of thing, what happened later on, is for other speakers through their lectures to inform and put it here. I thank you all for your patient hearing and I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts and pay my respects to the great personality of revered Dr. Hedgevar, who has not only started a movement in the name of RSS, who has rejuvenated the Hindu nationalist feelings, who has written the future pages of this nation's prosperity and the pinnacle of glory. Namaskar.